this is John from caveonprogramming.com and welcome to a series of tutorials on the collections framework in Java and um, in this tutorial we're going to start by looking at the probably the simplest and most often used member of the collections framework which is ArrayList. So the ArrayList class kind of implements um, an array that's expandable. So um, I'll type ArrayList here and all the um, members of the collections framework um, are template classes so after you write the name here of the class you want to use um, you always have to specify the type or types of the things that you want to store in the class in kind of um, angle brackets like this so let's say I want to put the um, int I want to put integers in this array list I'll call this numbers and I'll say equals new array list and I'll set this equal to I need to put integer here as well so basically wherever I type the name of the class I need the um, kind of um, type that I want to store in it as well and um, you can um, I'll just do control shift O to add the input here Java Util Array List and you can specify um, an initial size for your array list at the, t at the start but if you don't then I think the default size is 10 so normally um, I, I don't bother really. And um, it's worth noting that of, of course in case you're not too familiar with template classes you can't put a primitive type there. Um, you need to use the corresponding um, non-primitive type so I'll use integer and not int. Now to um, add values to an array list it's very simple there's a method called add so I say numbers.add let's add um, 10 like this then I'll add um, maybe dot add a hundred and let's have one more numbers dot add um, 50 40 okay and you can get um, numbers from this list pretty simply as well by saying um, numbers dot get so let's have this out and I'll say numbers dot get and the get method you just give it the index of the value that you want to get so here I've got three values so the index will, will be as in, a, as in an array, 0, 1, 2. And let's say I want to get the first item, it will be at index 0. So if I run that, I'll get 10. Um, another, common thing behind, um, another common thing that you want to do besides adding values and um, getting values, let's put some comments here, adding and retrieving, um, is you want to... Um, you want to iterate over all the items in your list and I can do that um, for example with a for loop so this is using indexed for loop iteration and I can say for int i equals naught and I want i to go from zero um, and I want, I want it to be incremented as long as it's not equal to the size of the list or in other words the number of elements in the list so there's three elements in this list so I want i to go 0, 1, 2 and I can get the um, number of items in the list by just using the dot size method so pretty simple and um, let's have a look at this so and now I can index the list I can say numbers dot get i like that and that will, um, that will that will display my list so let's put this out here Iter iteration Iter iteration um, one let's call it and then here I've got all the um, values in my list there is another way to iterate through lists um, the same thing that works with arrays also works with lists so I can say for and here's here I type the here I type the um, the type of the thing that's in my list that I want to retrieve. So integer in this case, integer value um, in numbers. I put a colon and then my um, the name of my list here, and then I, then this will just set value to each of the um, values in my list in turn. So I can say sys out value, and that's um, Let's call this um, sysout control space slash n iteration number two, like that. 
Okay, and if I run this, then I get 10, 140 again, which are the values in my list. Um, there's one last thing that I'm going to cover in this tutorial, and that's um, removing items from the list. So we've covered adding. Um, how can you remove items? Well, um, you can say um, you can say um, there is a remove method, and you just specify the index of the thing that you want to remove. So if you want to remove the first one, it will be zero, or the last one would be, in this case, numbers dot size negative one. But um, the problem is that um, uh, you need to be careful when you remove items from an array list because internally this array list just stores kind of an array um, and uh, when you exceed the size of the array it'll create a bigger array and copy the items to that and then carry on adding to that. So you can imagine that if you remove items from the end then that's pretty quick because um, all it will do is kind of decrement the size of the list internally. But supposing you remove items from the beginning, this is very slow. Um, so I'll say numbers dot remove zero. So I'll remove the zeroth item. And let's um, let's maybe um, put um, these here so you can see them working. I'll do Control Shift F to format. Okay, so if I run this. Um, so this is the list to start with, 1040. Then I remove the um, I remove the last item, 40, and I remove the first item, 10. So we've just got 100 left. But um, this is slow because when you remove items from um, an array list, what it does is it'll um, if you remove the first item, it'll then um, copy all the items, all the subsequent items, one step back to fill the, the hole, so to speak. So that's very slow. If you remove the last item, it doesn't have to do that, so that's fast. And even if you remove like the second to last or the third to last item, that can be reasonably fast. But if you remove the first item, that's going to be slow. And uh, it doesn't matter here because we've only got, you know, like three items in the list and we're just doing remove once. But if you had a big list and you're removing items again and again and again from the middle of the list or the beginning of the list, then that can really slow down your code tremendously. So you don't want to do that. And if you need to remove items from the middle or start of a list, then um, anywhere rather than the absolute end, really, then you need to use, um, let's say, linked list, for example. And we'll, we'll cover linked list in the next tutorial. Um, one last thing I should mention here is um, that um, the kind of collections classes are grouped um, by interfaces. So all the list objects, for instance, implement the list interface. So um, you can often see code that looks like this, let's say list um, values equals new array list. I need to put the template types in here as well. Let's make this store strings like that. And I need to put the template type on my interface as well. So um, this is just saying this this values variable implements can point to anything that implements the list interface. I'll do Control Shift O to add the import as well. It's Java Util List, um, and um, and, it, and we're going to point it actually to an object specifically of the type array list because this isn't a class. It's just an interface, so you can't create new lists, only new array lists or new linked lists or whatever. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. And um, as I say in the next tutorial, we will look at linked list and we will compare linked list with array list so you can see why you would want to use linked list, even though actually it's um, a bit more heavyweight and uses um, apparently more memory than array list. But for most purposes, you want array list. So join me again next time and you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com. And until next time, happy coding.